Cardano is a very powerful system. So it's significantly more stuff can go into the transaction than in Bitcoin. So we created a new model for this called the extended UTXO model. It allows us to have spending policies and multi-asset, smart contracts and all these things. And DSLs could even bring in regulatory dimensions and embedding Prism in means we can put identity native on chain. And that's a very sophisticated transaction. And the base ledger can perform very high speed for these things. Ouroboros is a very efficient protocol. So you can potentially have hundreds of these things going on every second. But then when you start stratifying these transactions, you're gonna notice that big pools of them are low value transactions. Big pools of them are occurring frequently, but collectively are only talking about maybe 5%, 10% of the total value of the ledger. So a lot of turnaround, but they're just bloat. So it makes more sense to batch those and put those into a different layer of the system and allow then for those things to enjoy acceleration. So you can do a lot more of them, the fees go down, they get instant finality. And that's kind of the concept of Lightning. So what we did is we just took the ideas of Lightning and we said, can we have native smart contract support for this and build it so that you can have as many channels as you want and they can all communicate with each other, route with each other. And every time you add it, you get linear scaling. So what that means is you get X more TPS per second capacity instead of saying that it, it goes up and up and up and then it reaches an asymptote and just stays at a constant performance. One head, two heads, three heads, N heads, the system just keeps scaling. So potentially you could grow to the capacity of millions of transactions per second, long term, years from now, decades from now, if you wanted to. And the great part about stake pools and delegation and all things of Ouroboros is you have a very natural set of people to run this infrastructure. So as we start growing, you put these Hydra heads on top of stake pools, and then they have now two settlement channels. And so you can either settle on the main network or you can settle on the layer two network, and it's completely dependent upon your requirements. Is it the value very high or low? Do you care about the settlement speed? Do you want fast settlement speed or slow settlement speed? Basically, they just work together and it's a seamless user experience and it's all there. But the end result is we have a beautiful base protocol uh, and it allows us to get a lot of that bloat that these systems tend to accumulate off-chain into different systems. The other really exciting thing about Hydra is you can make it interoperable with Lightning and then you can actually start talking about cross-chain compatibility. And so you say, well, how do you move Bitcoin to Ether or Bitcoin to Cardano and back and forth? So when you can put a DEX in there, you could actually exchange in there. You can do all kinds of cool things once you have these layer two networks running and basically just allows you now to start talking to other systems and talking in a way that there seems to be a standards driven approach pushing through. Whether you love Lightning or hate it, it is an approach that Bitcoin is very aggressively pursuing and it is an approach that is interoperable with Ethereum. So through this type of a system, once we get it all wired together, it'll be very easy for Cardano to talk to Ethereum and Bitcoin through those channels. So you can do more than just microtransactions and fast finality and high frequency stuff. You also will be able to do all of a sudden be able to communicate with other systems.